Singapore is exploring ways to trap the carbon dioxide it produces to cut emissions and fight climate change. Public consultations are ongoing on the use of the technology, but some experts say widespread adoption will take at least a decade as it will need large-scale testing and could be costly. Here's June Lowe with more. From the fizzy drinks you consume to the concrete floor you step on, these could all be made using recovered carbon in the next decade if Singapore goes on to adopt carbon capture technology. Basically, gas emitted from, say, power plants will be trapped and it will undergo a chemical process to separate carbon dioxide from the rest of the components. From here on, there are two options. The recovered carbon dioxide can either be transported and safely stored deep underground, such as in depleted oil fields, or it can be reused to manufacture useful products, which experts say is the better solution for Singapore. But questions remain over how best to integrate the technology with existing industrial systems and make the process cost-effective. While Singapore has rolled out carbon tax on large emitters, some experts say the country has to invest in large-scale testing with these sectors to fulfill its pledge to cut emissions intensity under the Paris Agreement. We've already committed for the 2030 uh, you know, uh, emissions reduction of 36%. It's not a matter of if we're going to go to carbon capture, it's just a matter of when. In a lot of ways, the process is no different from our water story. I think we started, PUB and others started with, uh, with testing at a small scale, then at a pilot and then a demonstration scale. Who is going to tap this gas into the uh, chemical industries to use it? Who is going to purify it? All this can be um, resolved by the larger scale or put in pilot scale to have a complete uh, integrated system to demonstrate that, to, to also learn, to also develop products, to develop system that can uh, make this uh, come to reality. If successful, experts say the economy will also stand to benefit. If we can master how to capture CO2 and utilize CO2 in an urban environment. We can export these technologies to most of the growing economies of the region, if not for the rest of the world. Very few countries in the world have as many power plants as we have situated within the city limits. Professor Tay says that will also make more impact on a global scale compared to pumping in vast resources to develop the technology just for its own use. Public consultations on how the country can reduce its carbon emissions end on the 30th of August. Suggestions can be sent to the National Climate Change Secretariat.